the second of our introductory slices of C++. In this particular one here, we want to, to, to look broadly, at a very high level, at the, the notion that C++ is a compiled language. We'll be delving into this in more detail in terms of having a look at the different compilation stages and look at optimi optimization, to look at interpreters and lots of other things. But, but here it is very much an introduction. And we want to do this because there's a number of different phases and stages that or C++ and, and also most other languages that our source code goes through to, uh, through by way of producing something that can be executed and, uh, and run. So for this one here, we're going to look at C++ as a compiled language. Now, admittedly, the, the sub-comment on this page probably is not that useful that C++ is a compiled language, fair enough, um, like basically all languages have to be compiled in some way to produce something that's executable and differs from C-sharp and Java, which are mostly, in brackets, incrementally compiled. Uh, so, apologize, it's, it's a confusing way of, of putting this here. Um, there's a lot of commonality between uh, the, 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 these different languages, and indeed most languages in terms of how they get to be executed. And, and we will be looking at what uh, differentiates them. In this first um, glance at it, we really want to, to say that if we're thinking about a pure compiled language, there's a number of distinct phases uh, that generally speaking, we go through by way of producing something that can be run. And the next few slides we're going to introduce those. And quite often in C++, they're, they're, the different phases, they're not hidden uh, one from another. And if we do get an error being reported, then quite often it's going to say if this is a linking error or a compilation error, whereabouts it comes from in terms of which particular phase it arose from. So have a look at the, the first one. So we'll go through a number of different phases by way of taking source code and turning it into something that ultimately gets to be executed. The first phase, phase one, is creating a program. So edit and produce one or more source files. In C++, the textual files, they'll have a .cpp or a .h for a header file extension. Java, they're .java, C Sharp, they're .cs. This is our, our source code, our text file that we as programmers uh, introduce and create. Uh, it says within a development environment, now you could just use a text editor because we're sensible seeing people. We will use a proper IDE, an integrated development environment with a whole set of tools um, that will help us better and more easily create our software. So once we have created our source code, the second phase is then pre-processing. So this happens just prior to compilation occurring. And you say here, the preprocessor apprised directives. So we have preprocessor directives. And those directives actually change the source code. They change the text that gets to be sent off ultimately for compilation. Preprocessor directives easily identified. They start off with a hash. So you can see a few here. If hash include, if hash not define, and so on. And you have these directives uh, within Java and C Sharp as well. So if you've written, ever written code where you have a hash in it, uh, then effectively that is a directive, a preprocessor directive, that will modify conditionally quite often uh, the source code that we have before it gets to be passed over to be compiled. And we'll have a look at those as we go through. Phase three then is compilation proper. And this is where we take a textual description or source code and modify it through a number of different phases and to produce at the other end what's known as object code. Uh, object code can be machine instructions or very, very close to machine instructions. Or in terms of languages like Java or C Sharp where you're producing bytecode or an intermediate language, it's, it's kind of virtual machine code. But at this level, we've turned our textual description into something that is down at the level of machine instructions. Important to recognize here that each of our source code files, or, or CPP on a data, Java and C Sharp files, they are individually compiled. Each one will be compiled in turn and will produce its own corresponding object file. 
And that's going to introduce some of the challenges within C++ because it is very much standalone and, and we will have to actually work if we want to pull in information from other files. In Java and C Sharp, it's, it's better done in, in terms of making it more easy and more convenient for the programmer to have um, a collection of source files sit alongside one another. Uh, but in C++, we're going to have to do it explicitly. Okay, so once we finish the compilation phase, still a few more phases to go, phase four then is linking. Um, probably, it's been a recently big project, we have a number of CPP files. Probably we've also used a number of built-in libraries. It could be the standard template libraries, the STL libraries within uh, C++ or some other one. Um, but during the linkage phase, our goal is to take all of these different compiled units, all of the object files, and to package them all up together into a single whole. And this will be our executable, runnable program. And a bit down the bottom, the linker also adds loading code to produce an executable program. So it also adds in another little bit that actually will kickstart the overall process. Phase five then is loading. So phase four results in our executable, uh, our exe file. Phase five is where we run that executable. Now you might think I'm running my program, but actually what gets to be run first of all is a small loader program. And it's really there to sort of bootstrap things. It, it, it loads in a sufficient amount of your code, the code that we've written, and puts it into memory. Uh, so it's a loader. Um, whenever it's got a sufficient amount loaded in, it then goes to your program and says, OK, off you go. You can now commence execution. And phase six is actual execution itself, where our program does whatever we want our program to do. So those are the different phases that we go through. Um, now, I want to tease out one aspect here, and this was tying into the compilation phase um, that each of our source files are independently pre-processed and compiled and produce their own object code, as opposed to all of the things being compiled together and then all stuck together at the same time. There's benefits to doing this. Uh, one of the major benefits is that if we have a large project and we change one of the files, then we only have to recompile that file to get a new object file for it and then to relink it in with all of the other compiled files. So it's a much more efficient way of doing it. As mentioned earlier on, in other languages like Java and C Sharp, the fact that we have a multitude of files isn't necessarily much of a concern to the programmer. So a lot of the tools actually handle how they can be combined uh, together. So in conclusion uh, then, um, by way of this introductory slice, just simply want to get across that C++ is a compiled language. But when we say that, what we mean is that it is separated up into a number of distinct phases. And these phases, um, as mentioned, are quite visible within C++. We'll, we'll have a reasonable amount of control over them. When errors occur, it'll identify the phase, uh, most commonly within which they occurred, and it's going to be up to, to think about, well, what happens in that phase to, to work out what uh, the actual error uh, is.